Hello and welcome to episode 290 of Geeking Up. I am Jim Pelker and today we have a very special treat for you as we have three reviews just for you. Let's start it off with Kong of Skull Island, number one. This is Kong of Skull Island, number one, written by James Asmus with art by Carlos Mo. Two fractured and warring tribes battle their Kongs to appease the gods. But when their ship gets destroyed near Skull Island, the tribes are forced to band together to battle the horrors on Skull Island in this King Kong prequel. Alright, we're back. So that was what happens in Skull Island. Kong of Skull Island number one. Let's talk a bit, little bit about everything else about the book. Alright, here's the plus and minuses. Alright, first off, this book has absolutely stunning art by Carlos Magno. Uh, it really brings the world to life and it's so vibrant and energetic. It's just beautiful to look at. Quite honestly, it's just gorgeous. Uh, the story and characters are compelling enough to help move it along and uh, at a burst pace and it honestly feels like an action-adventure movie. And guess what? Kong should absolutely feel like an action-adventure movie. This is a lot of fun and I had a really fun time reading it. Uh, and hey, there are multiple Kongs. And only one gets to be king. Later fight Godzilla. But, uh, honestly, I honestly cannot find anything wrong with this book, and it's just a blast to read. Uh, so if you are a giant monster fan or a King Kong fan, you owe it to yourself to check this book out. Alright, now I promised three reviews, so let's get into the second with Tomorrowland, number one. This is Tomorrowland, number one, written by Paul Jenkins, with art by Ulti Fermatia and Benny Moulin. Meet DJs Dimitri Vegas and Like Mike, the public faces behind the Tomorrowland Festival, who now find themselves drawn into an impossible adventure to save the vital spark of creativity in a battle between two worlds. Alright, so that's what happens in Tomorrowland number one. Now let's talk over the plus and minuses for this issue. Uh, it has vibrant and colorful artwork by uh, Alti Fermasa and Benny Molana. Uh, a very interesting premise, though it can be a tad flawed at points. And unfortunately, that's about where the good ends and the bad begins. As some of the storytelling seems rushed and characters are not given enough development and the art quality drops here and there, but overall it still works. Uh, now, I can't highly recommend the book. It's really nice looking uh, overall. Uh, it's got, like I said, vibrant colors and interesting characters. But there's not much development here, and unfortunately, with any type of sci-fi or fantasy story, you need good character development right off the bat, otherwise you can't dig into the reader and get them to come back again. And that's where I feel this one flails a little. Uh, plus, it's got Shakespeare in it, which is just weird, but hey, I've read weirder. Alright, so, on to the final review. This will be Chiro, Volume 1. This is Chiro, Volume 1, written and drawn by Hyukyun Bak. Utnyu Song lives the life of a modern-day princess. She grew up a famous as a child model. All the boys love her, all the girls hate her. Day after day, money and opportunity knocks on her door, begging to be allowed inside. Then... One day, she falls in love with an ordinary honor student, Chak Young Wu. At the same time, Unyu's alluring face draws the obsessive attention of popular teen icon Inan. One 
boy has the world on a string, the other boy has unio. Alright, so that's what happens in Chiro 1. Now let's talk over the good and the bad of Chiro Volume 1. Uh, for the good, it has fun artwork with lots of over-the-top exaggerated faces and moments. And that's about it for the good. Unfortunately, this book has dislikable characters. None of them seem to be very likable. And that's one of the worst things that I can ever say about a book because it's so true. If you don't have likable characters, why would people want to read your book? Unfortunately, the events that happen in this book do not make the characters likable, compelling, or interesting. And they seem to only really care for themselves, so basically they're hamsters. Which, never a good thing, I guess. But, yeah, then again, people call me a hipster, so maybe I am. I don't know. Honestly, uh, other than the over-the-top exaggerated moments, this book really just doesn't do it for me, and unfortunately, there's not much here to really dive into or get invested in. And unfortunately, with a book like this that's going to take a year or two to read, over about a thousand pages, the interest just isn't there for me. Alright, so that brings us to next week's episode, where I begin the Halloween Havoc. And by that, I mean every week you'll be getting monsters, horror icons, and even more. So let's start it off with a bang and let you choose between Pacific Rim, Tales from the Drift, or Giant Robot Warrior Maintenance Crew. We will see you next week. Be sure to vote for what you'd like to see next week. Pacific Rim, Tales from the Drift number one, or Giant Robot Warrior Maintenance Crew. And be sure to like and subscribe. See you next week.